Find a clown. Okay, uh, today, uh, we're just going to take a few notes today. Uh, I know that we're only in here for about a half an hour from uh, for right now. Uh, remember, today's an early out kind of a day. Um, I want to do a few notes what the next section is going to bring. We're just going to intro it today and give a couple examples. Then I'm going to give you time to work on that assignment that I gave you yesterday. When does that assignment do? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thursday. That's tomorrow. That's very soon. So uh, I want to give you at least some time today. Um, my plan is to give you about 15-ish minutes or more to work today. So I'm going to go through notes in about 10-ish minutes, and then I'll give you some time to work. Uh, but you need your notes up right now. We are going to intro the next section now. I'm not going to give a PowerPoint today. I think I've been doing that a little too much. So we're going to just go back to the mark board and, uh, and kind of write some stuff down. Uh, we have a couple definitions. We have a theorem we, uh, that I want to go through today. And then uh, I'll give you some time to work today. So I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay? All right. So the section that we're in, we're in section 9.9.4.3. There we go. 4.3. All right, now the title of this section is called Congruent Triangles. This is going to start the next couple sections where we are going to get into a point where when you look at pictures of different triangles, how do you know which ones are different versus which ones are actually supposed to be the exact same picture, the exact same type of triangle? And so that's what we're going to be looking at. There's little, like, signs that kind of gives it away. Which ones do you know that are exactly congruent to each other? Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about today, let's talk about the word congruent. I think we need to discuss that word one more time so we know the notation, we know the definition, all that good stuff. Question? Are you cool on size, shape, and then... Boom. That was exactly the right definition. So, in fact, we're going to come back to that. So, Fred, I'm going to ask you one more time for that. Here in a little bit. Now, the next word we're going to talk after that is a new term. Okay, this is one of the new parts that goes with what, what Fred just said, the definition of congruent. We're going to talk about uh, what they call in the book corresponding parts. This 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 concept, this corresponding part idea, is going to be one of our properties we're going to get later. In fact, uh, I put a little star next to it. This is super deceiving the way the book introduces this. Um, they introduce it in this section, don't get me wrong, but the theorem for it, like the, the property that we're going to use, they throw it in a little side note at the end of a homework problem. Like, it's they do a bunch of problems, you know, like the book goes like 250 and then they put a bunch of homework. They put the theorem after the homework, like at the very end of the homework, and I thought that was super weird. This is... This is a crazy important property in, in geometry. And I don't know why they would throw it as a, like, a little side note. Like, oh, hey, after this problem, now you know this theorem. Well, you should have introduced it in the chapter because it's actually crazy important. Um, so we're going we're gonna to intro the concept today, what it means. And then we're going to get to one theorem today. Our theorem is the uh, third theorem of chapter four. It is, uh, it is called the third angle theorem. actually the correct term. They talk about it a lot in other, in other textbooks, other geometry books, but uh, it is kind of one of the important theorems we need to know. It's kind of common sense, but I do want to discuss it, and it goes perfectly with what we're talking about today. So uh, that's kind of the idea. I want to do this in about 10-ish minutes, then give you the rest of class day where you can work in your assignment. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's jump right in. Let's talk about it. So uh, let's get to the word congruent. Fred, I want your definition of congruent one more time. Yeah. Equal in size, shape, and measure. Size, shape, and measure. I know that seems a little redundant. You okay with their problem? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's working. Hey. All right. No. Not quite. <laughs> All right. Uh, but equal in size, shape, and measure. So the idea is that when things are congruent to each other, they are identical. They're you cannot tell the difference. They're yeah, they're twinning, right? So the idea is that the word congruent, this is the symbol that the book uses. It's, a, it's an equal sign with a little tilde above it. Um, what that means is that things are exactly equal. And why they use this new symbol, uh, we talked about this back in chapter 1 and chapter 2, is that we, we compare geometry shapes are congruent. Now, algebra can be equal to each other. x is equal to 4. 
But when we talk about shapes, they're congruent. They're not equal. They're congruent to each other. Everything about them is the same. There's an actual shape to it. That's why we talk about this symbol. Uh, but what we're talking about today is we're going to be talking about triangles. So let me give you a rough example. Triangle ABC. That's how they write a triangle. They write uh, like they draw a mock picture out front, then they put three letters after it, and that triangle could be exactly congruent to DEF. So let's pick a different triangle. Now, what makes these congruent to each other? So if I had two pictures, two different triangles uh, on the board, what makes them exactly congruent to each other? So let's get, let's call this A, B. C, and over here, let's call this triangle D, E, and F, uh, E, and F. How do you know that the two triangles are equal? Everything about them has to have the same markers. Same markers. So like angle A, since it's the first letter, angle D, since that's the first letter, these have to be the exact same angle on the picture. So they have to have the same marker on both pictures. Um, maybe angle B and E, they have the same marker. And then angle F and C, since those are the last letters, they would have to have the same markers. So that's the number one thing. That would, that would make the two triangles congruent right now, as of this moment, right? That they're equal in size, shape, and measure. So the measures of the angles are the same. But what makes them fully congruent is that the walls have to be the same too. So like the wall from A to B, since that's the first two letters, a to B, that has to equal the first two letters over here, D, E. They have to have the same marker on them. And then the same thing, B to C has to have the same marker as E to F, because that's the second two letters. And then the last wall has to be marked as well. Now the triangles are exactly congruent to each other. Everything has to be marked. If one thing isn't marked, they're technically not congruent to each other. They have to have everything the same. Um, now, well, now you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's that's simple, right? I understand that. Like, if they have, you know, they have the same markers, fine, they're equal, yeah. But what we're going to learn in the rest of this chapter, you know, the not the rest of the chapter, but the, for the next couple sections, is that they don't have to give you all six parts, like three angles, three uh, three walls. They don't have to give you all six. They can, there's a bare minimum number of symbols they can put on the triangles, and it forces the triangles to be exactly congruent to each other. Bare minimum. Um, because it would force the picture to be in one set way that it has to snap to a certain grid that you can't like change the picture at all. What I mean by that is, you know, if I just knew that two triangles had the same two walls, like that's it, right? So two triangles have two walls being matched. That's it. That's all they gave me. So the triangles don't have to be the same size. They don't even have to be the same triangle. The reason why, they didn't tell me this angle in between them. So that angle could be any opening it wants. Because all I care about is that these two walls have to be the same size. So as you can tell, I'm certain to kind of show it here. But this triangle over here, could have been a, it could have been wider. right? So I could have had it something like this. As long as that the two walls were marked, it didn't force the two triangles to be the same. Um, but in this case, there was no other ways to draw this picture. Like, they had every marker known to man on that picture. So there's no way you could have drawn it differently. Um, it was like snapped to a grid. Like, that one, it kind of was free-floating. So that's what we're going to learn for the next couple sections. For things to be exactly congruent, everything is going to match. Now, the second part here that I put a little star next to called corresponding parts, that was the thing I was actually trying to explain to you. It was this concept that when you look at the label, like when you look at like triangle ABC and triangle DEF, the letters are written in order on purpose. Like they're written in order. You can't mix the letters around. So when I look at these letters, like when I look at the first two letters, they have to exactly match the first two letters over here. So now it is, from this moment on, it is insanely important that you write the letters down in the right order. You can't just put them in alphabetical. It doesn't have to be that way. You have to put them um, marker for marker. How I usually do this, how I put the letters in the correct order to make sure that they match, I go angle for angle. That's what I started with. Like angle A has to match D. Angle B has to match E. C has to match F. When you look at the picture, 
they do match in that order. So I could switch the letters around. So in fact, um, somebody tell me these three letters in any order, but not A, B, C. B, C, A. B, C, A. Okay. B, C, A. So now, if you write it like that, because you can choose your first triangle in any order, I have to switch this order now. I have to switch the second one, because I have to go letter for letter, because the corresponding parts have to match. Yeah. So yeah, so angle B matches E, so you're absolutely right. What was the second letter? F. F, because C, C on this picture, matches F. And then A, the last letter, A matches D. He's absolutely right, E, F, D. It has to be in that particular order, so now it's written correctly. Again, it does not have to be alphabetical, it has to go uh, matching letter for matching letter. Again, I usually use the angles to help me out. Um, if you want to use walls, you can use the walls to help you. Walls use two letters in order. So maybe like the first two letters have to match the first two letters for the wall. B, C wall has to match E, F wall. <coughs> C, A wall. Has to match F A or F D wall. Sorry, D wall. So I have to like go letter for letter. Okay, questions with the idea of what corresponding means. Letter for letter. Okay, what we're gonna do the next couple of days in here is that we're gonna we're gonna practice like if I give you different triangles, can we figure out what letter to write? You know the names, and and secondly, are they even equal to each other? That's what we're gonna be looking. At. Okay, so does that everyone understand what we're going into for the next couple of days? Okay, let's get to our one theorem today and then we're done. So, this gives you the concept of what we're going to be doing. Hopefully that made sense to you. Yeah. All right, let's get rid of this and let's do our one theorem today and we'll talk about it. It's pretty easy and it kind of goes with what your homework is, so it's nothing like too crazy. Okay, so theorem 4.3. Theorem 4.3. It is called the third angle theorem. All right. So I like to write the words down, then we'll uh, then I'll discuss it over on the whole picture. So if two angles in one triangle are congruent. Two angles in another triangle then their third angles are here. Let's write that down. We'll explain it. I know this is like common sense. It's using the, the one property we've learned up till this point, you know, about triangles have to add to be a certain number, but we're going to discuss. So I'll give you a little bit of time to write that down. Just talking about the third angles in any triangle. Now, I have slightly different wording in the book, so I'm paraphrasing from the book a little bit. The book, um, they, they threw in an actual part in there. They talked about, you know, in two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles in, an, in another triangle, or um, I think they used the word, or a similar triangle. So um, I, I just, it's a different triangle. So we're comparing two different triangles. I don't really care the way the book writes it. Okay, so here's what I need. Um, I need two angles, please. Random numbers you want. 45. 45 and? 83. What was that? What was your number? 84. 84. Yeah, that's right. All right, so say it again one more time. <laughs> 84, and what was the first one? 45. 45, all right. Okay, all right. All right, now I'm not saying that the triangles are exactly equal to each other. All we're talking about is that two angles match. So that's what this theorem is saying. So two angles in one triangle match two angles in another triangle. And again, the triangles can be different sizes because the angles don't tell you what, how long the walls are. They just tell you where the angles are in the corner. So I'm not saying that the triangles are equal. I'm talking about the angles themselves. Okay, so if two angles match, then their third angles have to match. 
Well, it's kind of common sense. Most people think, well, duh, because what do triangles have to add up to be? 180. 180. So if you know if we call this x, so x plus 45 uh, plus 84 equals 180, you can subtract these across and you can get to your final result. So um, if I add these together, I get uh, 129. That's 129. And if I subtract that across, was that 51? Yeah. If I subtract that across. And so that would be the same over here. Because again, it doesn't matter the order that you add them. The triangle should add up to be 180. I'll call this W. Because that's a different triangle, right? It's a different picture. Um, I would subtract these over, and W would be 51. Well, that's what they're saying. Is that when two angles match, the third angles have to match. Because duh, they add to make 180. So that's called the third angle theorem. And you're thinking, okay, word, what does it even matter? Why, like, why is that even a theorem? It's because this can help you lead to the point where I can get to a, a spot where I know that the two triangles are exactly equal to each other eventually. Because maybe maybe they're only giving me two triangles, two angles in any triangle. I can find the third one um, because of that concept. And I, I know that I know that the angles are equal, I don't even have to find it. I don't even care what the third angle was. I know that since two match, the other one has to match. I don't, I don't need to waste time going and finding it. I can just immediately mark the angle on the picture. So that's why it's actually super useful. I don't need to waste time. I already know two match, the third one has to match. I don't need to do the algebra. But I, I'm showing you the algebra in front of you so you can see the numbers do work. Okay, questions about this theorem. It's, it's our first step in proving that triangles are equal. This is one of the first steps. We have to show that the angles match. That's number one. I've already been checked that off. Okay, we good though? Yeah. Homework today. That was the page 250. I'm going to put it back on the board here. You have the rest of class today to work, the remaining part of class. That's about 15 minutes. So, okay, I'll give you a little bit of time here. I'll put the homework up on the board. Now, what does this homework do? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Keep that in mind. So homework due tomorrow.